Hello, I'm Aubrey Shepard, and we're sharing some nature photos and something a little political and activist, maybe, in the show. Okay, you see those uh, daily leaves all over town, and they are a beautiful, big splash of orange. This, I decided, instead of showing you the flower, I'd show you a little tiny bug that was on a flower stem there instead. You still see the color. These are elderberry flowers. Here I cropped uh, <laughs> and adjusted a little bit and maybe uh, give you an idea of how that elderberry flower is structured. But basically you see them, they're, they're just a blur of white uh, quite often. That uh, is a native wildflower, but it's one of the weeds that people love to cut down in their yards because even though you mow them, if you don't make sure you cut them off, they'll just spring right back up. Now this is a precious critter. This is the uh, bergamot bee balm. Uh, it's a very special wildflower. And this is the native uh, version that you find outdoors in Arkansas a lot right now, especially places never been plowed prairie and old uh, pasture that's grown up and that sort of thing. But uh, anyway, this is uh, hairy wild petunia. You saw the slide with the uh, stem of it, I think, the foliage. And there's a close up of, again, a cropped because it's pretty small. It fits there in the, in the palm of my hand. Now then, monarch caterpillars. I probably showed you these a week ago and these two were pretty tiny if I did get them on the show last week. But uh, in a week, they have grown large. So uh, by the time uh, you get over to World Peace Wetland Prairie and look under all the leaves and find them, that show will be uh, a week old. And uh, I imagine they will be in chrysalis form by then because they are getting pretty large. They're on the uh, butterfly weed, people call it. It's the milkweed. Uh, Asclepius tuberosa. All right, that is a relative of one I show you a lot, the uh, sensitive briar. It's probably uh, in, the, in that legume family, and uh, it's got white little flowers, but it's got very, very narrow leaves, even narrower than the, the one, the red one we'll show you in a minute. This is, uh, let's see, goat's beard. This is a non-native plant. I don't feature non-native plants very much. The uh, tiger lily was an exception, of course. Okay, here is the, uh, the version that catches your attention the most if you're out in the prairie or somebody who's actually got some sensitive briar in his yard. And of course, these are, are uh, in that. Okay, let's jump ahead to the wing stem. That is one of the verbosina species, verbosina alterna folia, and uh, it uh, is uh, yellow, uh, and here you see, I believe it's a selected bee on it. It's kind of a uh, shiny green head there. Uh, may show up better on another one, but anyway, this is the yellow um, frost weed, if you will. That's because that uh, wing stem, the, the uh, foliage around the stem holds water and on a, the first cold frosty mornings we have it'll make magnificent frost flowers and I've shown you those in the winter and occasionally in the summer I should have got one to go with this okay I'm not going to be able to call the name but this is a native plant it's a big shrub you can see it's long skinny leaves there and uh deer browse those and a lot of birds eat them okay this is the team that put together the uh, uh uh, demonstration on the square in support of the Syrian people who are being tortured and murdered and so forth and it's mostly Omni folks and some of those people are really from the Middle East and can speak the language and they spoke on Saturday afternoon the uh, what was that the uh, 10th 11th uh, for uh, uh, Syria global Syria day Okay, this butterfly came to that Syria demonstration 
flitted around over it and came up and lit just over my head under the awning of the um, town center. There is the Unitarian minister. She's supporting the Syrian people. In fact, she's supporting freedom, justice, dignity, and so forth for all people on earth. And there are a couple of other important people in that uh, program. Okay, uh, until next time. Well, let me say, please look on YouTube for some uh, video. I have a bunch of video on my All Unique uh, video on uh, YouTube channel. Till next time, Solver Shepardation, you do your part to help keep your water clean, the air pure, and the woods green. See ya. Hello, I'm Aubrey Shepard, and once again, we want to run a quick slideshow of photos from South Fayetteville, Arkansas, primarily, and a lot of wildflowers. Oh! Some butterflies too. That's a cone flower at World Peace Wetland Prairie, and probably the one you call the purple cone flower. And that uh, is a great spangled fritillary, and it's one of the beautiful butterflies that you see around town right now. And those those are the uh, uh, prairie wild rose, Rosa arkansana, that uh, is popping up all over World Peace Wetland Prairie and other places around town. There's a small spider and a uh, close-up of him trying to get a close-up on that uh, uh, milkweed plant. That's the uh, uh, same one that the caterpillars are on, same one, same kind, the uh, butterfly weed. It's the kind that uh, uh, most people recognize as milkweed. And of course you saw the caterpillars and the fritillary, great spangled fritillary there. There are the people gathered for the um, uh, demonstration, the uh, bunch of speeches about what was going on in the Middle East and asking for peace and mercy over there. And here's the great spangled fritillary on uh, Bergamot out on Pinnacle wet prairie, which is immediately west of World Peace Wetland Prairie. There you can see a big old bumblebee also on a bergamot or bee balm plant. And uh, a lot of different uh, insects use those. That's one I've shown a lot in the past, and it's, it's uh, the uh, wing stem, and it's got a, um, excuse me, bumblebee on it. And there we've got several shots and love to show what pollinators like what plant. And if I had more time to gather my notes, I would have brought in a list of, of um, what insects use what plants are as host plants to explain what another importance of these particular flowers. But anyway, uh, that's another bumblebee. And there, oftentimes now we've got some huge bumblebees, some small bumblebees. I don't know the names of the species, probably could never learn them. This, I know, is a tiny uh, soldier beetle. And it's on what I believe, this is also a pinnacle wet prairie, and there's another close up of the same flower. I believe it's a type of uh, something from the onion family and that it is a native and uh, you will uh, find lots of things in the onion and garlic, whatnot, uh, family of bulbs. That is not a native for sure. That's Queen Anne's lace. And uh, once again, I'm trying to do uh, close-ups of a few of those that you see those from a distance and you just see a sea of white and really, uh, here's a more important plant, a native plant. It's mountain mint. And uh, there's a narrow leaf mountain mint, and there's a, a uh, hairy mountain mint uh, that are both native. I believe that's the narrow leaved mountain mint. Hard to get good close ups of those flowers. I tried there, and again, to get that close, I was already pretty close, so I, I cropped in on the picture before I put it on the DVD to use for this production, but uh, Mountain Mint is a delightful little uh, flower that attracts a lot of pollinators and serves as host plant to some 
some species. That looks like uh, penstemon, but it's not. That's what we know as sensitive plant. But the flowers have a, a certain similarity. But the buds are the flowers before they open, as you can see the small ones at the top and on the stem. Uh, at that stage, they, they don't remind you much of penstemon because the, the plants are strikingly different out in the open. Sale barn, somebody with a weed eater, I think it was a lady, but uh, the reason the picture's there is that there's a sign there saying the sale barn is again being, uh, as the owners are requesting a rezoning to something called uh, community services. And that would include some apartments and all sorts of things, or duplexes, houses. Uh, but uh, anyway, the, there is a note that in the letter from the lawyer who's requesting the uh, rezoning for the owner that uh, Campus Crest, the group who uh, tried to get it approved for apartments uh, two years ago, uh, still has a, a a, a contract to actually buy that sale barn property right next to the National Cemetery. And there's the rub. Till next time, this is Arbor Shepherd asking you to do your part to help keep the water clean, the air pure, and the woods clean. See ya.